What is up everybody, it is Dylan Lasagna here, and after weeks of owning this particular game, I want to talk about it, I want to have a discussion about it, and maybe even do a little review of it. Um, so, I've been having so much with this uh, game, and what is that game that I'm going to be talking about? Well, it starts with three letters, C, T, R, and that stands for Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. This is a remake of the original Crash Team Racing game, plus along with some content from its, I guess, its other two games. There's another Crash Team, Crash Racing game, and then Crash Nitro Kart. There's a bunch of content in here that I'm gonna go over today, and I, I didn't pick this up initially at launch, so that's why you didn't get like a discussion from me then. But you're getting one now, so here we go. Is this going to be like a uh, <laughs> is this going to be another like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or is it something very unique? Let's get into it. Crash! CTR! That's how you always see the game. And then we're going to go into the main menu. It's pretty simplistic like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe but there's a like it seems like at first glance there's a little bit of difference actually a major difference when you go deeper so pretty much what I want to go over into right now is like the different types of modes there's obviously adventure mode local arcade online the pit stop high scores <laughs> uh, that just shows you your height scores and then Grand Prix so we're gonna go over all of these um, except for high scores because that's pretty self-explanatory we're gonna go all into this um, into this video. Let's talk about the overall gameplay of this CTR game. Um, man, right out of the gate, this is not like Mario Kart 8 at all. <laughs> like literally at all. I had to not only learn the controls, like it's which are completely different, but learn the different techniques and mechanics to win races. Like the first thing you have to learn is the different drifting mechanic. Like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's drifting mechanic is very simple. Press R and then decide what kind of boost you want. And CTR, you have to con you have to press two buttons to to get your drift. But in in layman's turns, you get power sliding. So here we go. We got a race going on, and you see that meter there at the bottom. You have to you have to see what kind of boost you want like in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe there's a good boost and there's a there's a perfect boost but if you do it too early you'll fail and then see you want to go all the way to the max and then if you saw earlier you gotta find the shortcuts too and you see the flames too uh, they help you throughout this map to go faster so pretty much throughout about this is power sliding is key power sliding helps you go faster it helps you win races faster it pretty much helps you in like almost every situation turning not so much like getting out of sharp turns not so much that's where brake sliding um, helps you to get the blue flame you have to go off a super turbo pad you'll find those in certain maps Power sliding is key you can't just press R to, you can't press R to drift, like to get out of, like to try to get out of a sharp, like a tight turn, but you can't, like, it's not how you drift, like, to get the speed boost. You have to not only press R, you have to also press the other trigger as well. So uh, it's pretty, like, tedious, but it's also, it's, uh, it's, it's a learning curve that you can sometimes get used to, but. One of the most frustrating things I find about like doing these two things, it's not very. It's sometimes not as consistent because sometimes you want to drift to the like power slide to the right. It makes you go to the left, and even when you want like use the analog stick to make it go to the to the right, it still makes you go to the left or power slide to the left. So it's unfortunate. One of the big concerns I had about uh, CTR was the amount of rubber banding. Uh, the game had. What do I mean by rubber banding? I mean like when you're ahead, like a lot, like big time, and then all of a sudden, like this, the AI just like comes right, like right, blazing fast, 
and then they cap like they take the lead and even at some instances they like just come straight out of the gate and like even though you're ahead by miles they just like slowly 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 come like blazing fast and then they beat you that's rubber banding um and that was a big complaint for a lot of the C like the ctr reviews i saw um for me uh i saw that early on but then as i got as i learned power sliding like and i'm still learning power sliding like the techniques um you just have like i didn't notice the the rubber banding as much it's still a little bit there but like it's not really noticeable anymore for me the character roster in this game is freaking stacked i mean it's like not on mario kart 8 level stacked but you got like an abundance of characters of like mo of crash team racing characters and there's more to come with with the grand prix mode see coming up um you get the grand prix mode seasons and i'll get more into grand prix mode later but let's talk about Let's just talk about the abundance of Crash Bandicoot characters that are in this game. So they're they're divided by classes. So pretty much there's beginner, intermediate, advanced characters. So some beginner characters include these weird animals that they decided to include. Uh, but the notable one is Ripper Roo, and then you got characters that you have to unlock. Certain characters are unlockable in the pit stop. And then you got intermediate characters like, of course, your boy, Crash, Dr. Cortex, Coco, uh, you even have fake Crash for some reason, uh, Tawana, Megumi, and Isabel of the Nitro Girls, or whatever, from CTR, the original CTR. And then more characters from the Pit Stop, and advanced characters like Tiny Tiger, uh, Dingo Dial, and Papu Papu. So, th those are your characters. And then you got a bunch more down here that can be unlocked in the pit stop. And I'll get to Entropy later. I'll get to Entropy later because he's a pain in my butt right now. You also got more customization with their characters. Um, let me get into that with using Crash as, a, as an example. So you got different color palettes. You got different like costumes, skins. And I even managed to get the Electron skin even though I didn't pre-order the game. And then there's more in the pit stop. Um, the, the amount of costumes vary by character, and then there's that. Then you got the amount of, like, the cart customization. Uh, you get different, bot like, cart bodies. You, you get different cart wheels. Uh, that's a little surprising, but sure. Um, and then you get different paint jobs, which is always a good thing. And different stickers, even different stickers. So the amount of customization in this game is freaking, freaking huge. Like, for like character wise so that that's what i like about ctr i like it in mario kart 8 too um but the amount of customization in ctr is just overall jam-packed it's just jam-packed so and i just want to talk like a little bit about characters a little bit more because you start you start with like the initial eight like the elite eight i suppose you start with crash cortex tiny tiger coco and gin Dingo Dial, Polar, and Pura. Those are your starting eight. And then you like to unlock the rest, you have to play Adventure Mode, which I'll get into later. Then you you pretty much have to unlock the rest via the Pit Stop and other game modes, and that's pretty much how you do it. Let's talk about my biggest complaint about this game. Let's get a little critical. Alright. So let's let's just load up a game. Let's lo let's load up um let, let's go on a different map. Let's go to Coco Park because <laughs> it's the, like, the easiest map on the game. Uh, so let's start up a race. Let's start up a race. Um, and let's just wait.
There, now it loads. Now it loads. You see how long that took? You see how long that took? That took freaking 30, at max, 30 seconds to load. All right, all right, all right, hold on. We gotta stop it. Stop it right there. We gotta stop the video right there. Past self, you, you, under, you underestimated yourself because it was at 48 seconds. The, the Jeopardy song finished. It finished, okay? At the exact same time, the, the game loaded up. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. The developers of the game seriously need to update the loading times so they can be significantly shorter. Alright, now let's get back to the video. Why, why is it taking so long for, like, a kart racer that, that freaking lasts at least, like, m for most, for most tracks, at least, maybe, like, th two, three, or four minutes, depending on the track, like, how long the track is. Why does it take, why does it take 48 seconds? I, it's like, I don't, I don't believe it. It's like Mario Kart 8 is only, like, 10 seconds most. Like, 10 or 15 seconds most. And the long, the longest this can go is 48. Even by pressing all the buttons on the controller, mash like ASMRing all the control on the bu all the buttons on that ASMRing all the buttons on the controller, it it reduces it like by a few seconds, and that's it. I mean, sometimes it goes for maybe 20 seconds, but that's only it. Why is the loading time? So ridiculous in this game but it is like I, I hope they address this in an update I know I, I think the developer of this game s said they were gonna fix the loading times specifically for the Nintendo Switch version because it, it's really ridiculous it's it's really ridiculous and hopefully with that update that the developer is gonna do um, whenever that is uh, hopefully it fixes it. Pretty much how docked and handheld work, it, they pretty much run the same, to be honest. Like, graphically, it's just a, a graphical difference. Um, I mostly play in docked because I want to get the most out of the controls. Because playing in handheld just cramps my hand with, uh, kart racers. Um, but handheld and tabletop, they, like, from my experiences, as you saw with one of my videos... Uh, they play. It plays pretty well. It runs pretty well, and the gameplay remains the same hands down. So I have no complaints with handheld mode or even docked mode. In regards to the graphics itself, um, I'm not a big graphics guy, but it doesn't look. It doesn't look the same, obviously, as the PS4. No, nor it will it ever. But the only difference is you will notice are like there's no. No, like you don't notice the fur, obviously, but I don't care. I don't care. It looks great. The game looks great. Um, the graphics, the graphics are absolute. It looks beautiful. The stages are beautiful, and it's just a great. It's great graphically. The gameplay is good, and I will t like. I'm having so much fun with this game, despite the long loading times with with it, and if. Even though it's a fun game, um, there's just so much more to unpack with it. So let's get into the game modes. Local game modes, otherwise known as the local arcade. So let's get into this. So, so right off the bat, um, you you notice like a like it's a noticeable difference from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. You got single race, then you got cup races, then you got battles, then you got time trials, you got relic races, CTR challenge, and the crystal challenge. So single race is pretty obvious. It's like a, it's like, it's like you can play with up to four players. Handheld, it's like I think you can only play up to two, and then you can choose the number of laps. The maximum is seven, which is kind of a lot if you ask me. And then you can choose the difficulty: easy, medium, and hard. Um, I play on normal. Um, I have no idea why it's on easy. And then you can switch like, like, you can reverse it. You can play in mirror mode as well. And then, like, when even when you go into like the different modes, you'll notice an insane amount of like maps there are. You have like the ones from CTR, and I'm not sure which ones are from this 
other Crash Team Racing game. But then you get into Crash Nitro Kart, which is its own little category. So, personally, um, some of the like the Nitro Kart stages are kind of annoying to me. Thanks to the Grand Prix mode, which I'll go into later, they add bonus tracks. Um, the Grand Prix gives you bonus tracks. So, there you go. One thing I got out of the way early. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that's that. So, right out of the gate, you get a lot of tracks there. And then, moving forward, you got Cup Races, which are the equivalent to Mario Kart's Grand Prix mode, um, where it's like four like races, like four races in like one cup. So you got the Wumpa Cup, and then you got the Nitro Cup, the Crystal Cup, and etc. etc. So you have a total of like, um, what is this? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cups. So it's a lot. It's a lot of variety in those cups. Then you got Battle Mode. Um, it's a pretty decent amount of, of maps, and then you got some from Crash Nitro Kart too. Um, the, let me give you an introduction to the battle modes. You got Limit Battle, which is uh, scoring points by hitting enemies with power-ups. Uh, it's a little bit not as simplistic, um, because you can choose how many, like how you want to play it. If you want to do it in a time limit, through point, through a point system, or through lives, and then you can change which power ups show up or don't show up, and you can even play with AI or if you're doing a party. Then you got capture the flag, which is self-explanatory. If you never played capture the flag, however, you pretty much have to steal the enemy flag. But the catch is, if the if you steal the enemy flag, but the opposing team has your flag as well then you can't like score you have to go make the enemy team drop the flag first then return then you have to go run to the flag or drive to the flag return it to base and then you can score then you got crystal grab um, you just have to grab the most crystals within the time limit but you can't get hit otherwise you will lose the crystals uh, self-explanatory last kart driving is like pretty much WWE's equivalent or the crash team racing to WWE's equivalent to last man standing matches you pretty much can't die um, you'll only have like three lives but you can like set it to a max of nine lives and then you can set the the time limit uh, I didn't even know they had a like you don't you can set it to like a time limit of none oh that's an interesting catch and then you got steal the bacon um, it's like capture the flag, but there's only one f like central flag, um, so you pretty much like you pretty much get get the bacon. It's like capture the flag, but with bacon. Mmm, that made me hungry. So there's your there's your battle modes, and you got like again a a cool amount of maps here, um, even some from Nitro Kart. Here's my um, <laughs> here's my one of my biggest yeah like like coolest yet annoying modes of the game time trials time trials they give players um the biggest challenge of all like even more so than the game mode i'm going to explain later because they make you test your driving skills alone there's absolutely nothing there's no power-ups there's no the yellow crates from the insane trilogy more on that in, when i explain the relic races um they make you test on your driving skills alone and your instincts to see shortcuts which are also in the game um time trials are also the only way to unlock a specific character called dr entropy um, so pretty much you have to beat all of his time, like his times, like the choppy ghosts. So pretty much <laughs> it's, it's pretty frustrating once you start getting to like harder, uh, time trials, especially when you do twilight tour, even though it's pretty frustrating, they help you like learn how to find shortcuts. They also help you how to like drift or as in this game, they call it. Um, power sliding so they pretty much how teach you how to do a bunch of different things like power sliding and chains and when to when and how to power slide finding shortcuts to help you like finish races faster and etc etc pretty much you have to finish all these time trials to get dr. entropy but if you're in for a real challenge you can 
the ghost of Dr. Nitrous Oxide. Um, yeah, he's a character in the game. Uh, Dr. Nitrous Oxide's ghost times are in there as well, and he's probably very challenging. And if you beat him, then I think you get a skin for Dr. Troppy. Out of all the game modes in this game, you'll rage the most in time trials. Um, so, moving forward, the rest of the game modes contain modes from the adventure mode. That's the mode I was going to get into later, but these are the modes anyway. Relic races. You remember the relics from the relic trials from the Crash and Tain trilogy, right? And from even from Crash Warped. So the relic races, if you remember correctly, are pretty self-explanatory. Um, they're like time trials, but you get like yellow crates that help like delay your time for a number of seconds, depending if it's like one, two, and a max of three seconds. And if you get if you manage to hit them all fast enough and maintain your like time. You get like a 10 second reduction, so it helps you like further like get your time right. <laughs> and then as you can see, there are three different relics, the sapphire, the gold, and platinum. And most people aim for platinum because they want that they want that platinum gold. <laughs> to get platinum, again, as I mentioned, you have to like hit all the crates, all the yellow crates, and you also have to be fast enough to to finish on time. CTR challenge is kind. Of, it, in my opinion, it's like the skate, like the the skate challenge. You know how you have to get the the letters in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, like the word to make the word skate, or, or what what was it called? It's some like those kind of letters in Tony Hawk. It's it's like. This is the equivalent in Crash Team Racing, Team Racing Nitro Fuel. So, some are fairly easy to find. Other, like on other tracks, however, they're pretty damn annoying. So, you have to like find some resources to go get it. Crystal Challenge is like, um, it's the equivalent to Crystal Grab in Battle Mode, but you have a time limit on how, like, getting the crystals. So. You have to, yeah, you just pretty much have to grab all the crystals before the time is up, and they use the battle mode stages. So, if you're familiar with battle mode, then you'll you'll have a decent chance. So that's pretty much all the game modes that you can play in CTR. But that's not the bulk. That's not even the bulk of it, y'all. If you thought local arcade was deep enough, let's go into adventure mode. As you can see, uh, I I I I don't mean to brag. I don't mean to brag. Unlike Mario Kart, Crash Team Racing has its own adventure mode. Um, with its own story, by the way. Um, so there's that. So pretty much, um, adventure mode kind of works like a cra like a normal Crash uh, Bandicoot game would work. Um, so pretty much, like you could play this in one or two ways. Um, there's there's classic mode. You could play like the original Crash Team Racing. You but you can only play with one character from all the way through. With no customization or difficulty set, you can only play on one difficulty setting, and you still get all the rewards. Nitro fueled, on the other hand, I guess you can change the difficulty, and you can play with any item that you've already unlocked. You can customize all the, you can customize whatever your character. You can even change the character that, like midway through the game. So that's pretty cool and you can custom it's, it's like an endless amount of like customization given to you in the nitro fueled mode so that I personally played on nitro fueled because why not <laughs> I wanna I wanna be able to like take advantage of like the different types of racers but I, to be honest I honestly played with crash bandicoot the whole way through <laughs> on nitro fueled the only thing I changed was like the the, the cart body and the uh, and the, the skin crashes like color palette. But let's go explore uh, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel, shall we? This is where my last stop was. Nitrous Oxide, like, that's the that's the boss of this game, Nitrous Oxide. Um, the, sto the story is pretty much centered around Nitrous Oxide trying to turn the whole world into a parking lot unless somebody, like, beats him in a race. That somebody is... This this dude right here, Crash Bandicoot, and 
If you don't beat him in a race, then yes, he's going to turn the whole world into a parking lot. Who would have thought that? But anyway, um, to to try to like get to not nitrous oxide, you have to go, you have to go win a lot of races to to get to him. Uh, so let's go explore what you call the hub world. And as you can see right from the get go, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty visually impressive. Like the hub world also gives you plenty of space to like practice power sliding a bit, even in the tightest areas. So this is where you start in sand. Where are we right now? Oh, Skull Rock. So this is where you start Skull Rock. So this is where your your first race would normally be Crash Cove, but you don't have to start there. You can actually start. Oh no, this is Insanity Beach. I'm sorry. You can actually start like pretty much anywhere. You can start here at Ruse Tubes, and like that's pretty much your two starting points. And then throughout the as you progress you unlock more races like mystery caves and then the other two I the other two races and then with enough races won you get to unlock boss battles the first one being Ripper Roo but I, I'm trying to be careful not to go in there you get to get boss challenges so with boss challenges um, some of them can be tricky some of them can be pretty easy um, but I do want to warn you that they tend to like be pretty spammy. What I mean by spammy is that they drop a lot of like items. They they'll cheat big time and repeatedly. So for example, with Ripper Roo, he'll drop TNTs. Pinstripe will spam bowling balls. I think Pop Papu Papu dropped like beakers. And then uh, who is the other boss? in this game like in this game there's another boss that dropped a uh, night like frequent nitro crates and it was freaking annoying I think the most annoying one was uh, before nitrous oxide was pinstripe because he kept spamming bombs that means like the most annoying thing ever so after you beat Ripper Roo you unlock the rest of the hub world and this is what it looks like so here is the the ice world the ice world and it's pretty nice this is like pretty cool to see so here we are in the ice world and I don't know why it's still saying mystery caves but whatever here's the temple one and then the last one was cortex's lair but I'm kinda lazy to go in there that's adventure mode for you um, the story itself like the if you like really commit to it it's pretty short I've managed to finish it in less than five hours um, but if you really want to like be a completionist um, I think if you really want to be a completionist after you beat nitrous oxide like after you beat nitrous oxide he he cl he claims defeat but he won't he'll be he said he'll be back to like claim victory because that's nitrous oxide that's how villains work so pretty much this is what happens what you oh okay that's not what's supposed to happen but you get extra game modes was what's supposed to happen you do like you get the crystal challenges you get the CTR challenges and you get the relic races in the adventure mode so after you beat all of that then you get another race with nitrous oxide which is pretty damn challenging the first time around with nitrous oxide the first time around with nitrous oxide it was pretty uh, frustrating but it was like nothing spectacular like after like the f like the tenth go around, but the second time he he got mu he was pretty faster than the first time actually much faster, and then he spammed like wep all of the boss's weapons like like very frequently, but if you know his strategy like if you know when he's gonna drop it and if you keep power sliding then you'll you'll know where what he's gonna do and if you can easily outrace him and just keep power sliding onto turbo pads so that's adventure mode for you and then after you beat nitrous oxide the second time he leaves the galaxy for good and that's that's the adventure mode um but again it's pretty short if you like finish it the first time and never come back to it but if you're a completionist there's plenty to do let's talk a little briefly about uh the pit stop which is pretty much like 
your ends on needs for f for getting the stuff for like cosmetic stuff <laughs> and extra more characters and skins so that's pretty much all it is um like you can also get more more body like cart bodies and that's that's pretty much it and you'll also find some other like characters but it's empty right now another mode i want to talk about right here right now well it's act not actually a mode but it's actually like a system and that's called the grand prix grand prix is like a season it's like it's like a season of like ch like full of challenges that you get so in order to get like rewards so this month or this season it was centered around tawana and the night like the nitro girls or whatever it was called but pretty much it was centered around tawana and the nitro girls and you get rewards based on that and then as you can see the the highest you can go is motorsport tawana the a uh, skin for motorsport tawana and then if you play online then and you finish in the top five then you get like this cool looking cart but pretty much how grand prix works is that you get a bunch of challenges like quick challenges it's pretty much the easiest one uh but if you don't have well i'll get into this later um pretty much it's pretty simple challenges like like these win a race customize a cart do a time trial race they're pretty simple ones then you got like daily challenges um like like getting crystals with a certain character doing trick jumps um multi hits and then new, not using turbo pads but finishing first in the race and doing capture the flag then you got the weekly challenges like capturing 25 fa flags and capture the flag and winning a race despite getting hit with 10 obstacles and hitting 25 characters on Aku Aku's team and then you got like the theme challenges um that go throughout the uh the whole course of the grand like the grand prix which i want to mention that runs through season like different seasons so the tawana one is a whole month i think so there's that and then so you get pretty much all these challenges based on like the stuff that the game adds so you get like this one zero the first Finishing first in Twilight Tour while starting the last lap in last place. Uh, Grand Prix Dominator first in an online race with Tawana. Uh, power sliding with Tawana. And there's pretty much the like challenges based on the Grand Prix like char uh, characters and cards and like all the stuff that's added in the Grand like this season's Grand Prix. Then you got pro challenges, which are the hardest ones. Um, but if you can, they're doable. If you can do it, then they're doable. So you got like this one, um, being the be the platinum relic time, like the the relic race time in Crash Cove, uh, all the t breaking all the time crates in Coco Park, uh, squashing three opponents in Crash Cove, and winning a race twice in a row in Hot Air Skyway without going off road. So it's those some of the. Those are just a bulk of like the challenges right there, and I'll, I'll be honest with you: if you don't have Nintendo Switch Online, then it's gonna be—it's not a stretch that you can finish. Like, it, it, it's gonna be a little bit of stretch. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say it. Um, again, I—I I don't have Nintendo Switch Online, but it—I'm—I'm it, I'm trying to get through it. The best that you can do and that I'm doing right now is at least doing all the quick challenges the daily challenges the weekly challenges and at least the majority of the themed and the pro challenges so there at least there's that um, hopefully um, it get it gets us Nintendo switch online haters to up to the the max reward that it's possible which is a skin for Tawana but there, that's Grand Prix mode. Um, I wanted to explain that, like, to get like the max reward possible, you get you have to get Nitro points. To get Nitro points, you can you you simply have to complete races, whether that's local or online. Um, but 
you see this thing at the pit stop, like this little that little meter that that get little percentage, um, that gives you um, a, an increase of how many nitro points you can get. So it it varies. It varies. Even the Grand Prix characters, can, like like Isabella and Tawana, and like if you equip a skin that drastically increases the the number of nitro points you get because that will help you get all the rewards hopefully <laughs> hopefully but yeah that's pretty much how grand prix works and overall i think it's a nice addition to to the to the game and i think that's something that nintendo needs to do with mario kart because even though grand prix can be kind of a grind sometimes it's like it keeps come it actually makes you come back to the game it makes you come back to the game play it some more and it ju it's just very addicting it's very addicting and that's the one thing i kind of am a little disappointed about with nintendo like with mario kart 8 deluxe is that they should they should do some they didn't do anything like this um with the like the, this grand prix setup but it is what it is. Hopefully, they do something Mario Kart 9 or 10 or whatever number of that. Um, but that's that's how it is. Pretty much, um, I'm recording this as my free trial of Nintendo Switch Online is happening. Uh, this is what the online is, I guess, like. So, you have private match, which is with your buddies. Um, so, I guess this is how you would set it up. You have to set it up with your friends. Uh... So there's that, and then oh yeah, yeah I want to quit, and then you can play with your fr or see which friends are joinable, but I guess none of them are. <laughs> Sad life, and then main one is matchmaking. So you can do races or battles, but we're gonna go into a race. Um, so I played like a couple of races of CTR and. This is the one thing I'm kind of a little disappointed at, but kind of expected at the same time, is that, oh, there we go. New normally, um, it takes a while for for players to show up for for a, for a race, and that's kind of, I'm actually going to vote for that one. It takes a while for, like, people to show up during a race, and I can't, it's, it's kind of like disappointing because Nintendo Switch is a good console, but it also a reminder of how like the like the 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 game's player base is kind of it's it's kind of not as big as like PlayStation Four and Xbox One in regards to CTR. I think the most I saw in that uh, championship leaderboard for the Grand Prix was like about two hundred thousand, and that's not a lot. That's not really a lot. But let's get into a little bit of online racing. Let's play a little bit. Um, I experienced a little lag here and there, but it's been pretty smooth. But I don't know. Maybe Nintendo should just make this for free if they're just gonna offer <laughs> the same thing that they've been offering when the online was free. So there's not much of a lag yet. It plays pretty normally. The only complaint I have right now is how there's no like no item races right now. Cause I like playing with items and all that, but it's like let's give let's give players a challenge, you know? Oh shoot, I forgot the power slide. Do that. But I'm doing fairly decently. But I keep crashing into stuff. So yeah, I pretty much sucked. I, I pretty much did shitty throughout that race. Um, but that just shows you how hard this game is. Um, but get good, right? Get good. Uh, but overall, the online is not that bad. Um, and as you can see, the rewards that you get for for playing and the the Wumpa coins that you get is much bigger than you, when you play offline but the online is okay it's alright I just wish that 
it wasn't behind a paywall. I don't know if it's using peer-to-peer, -peer, dedicated servers, but it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is a very fun kart racing game. However, I will say this. <laughs> I will say this. By no means is this a party game at all throughout the weeks that I've had this game. And I will tell you why. Um, this is not like Mario Kart 8 where you can just... Take, give your friends a Joy-Con and simply just drive and you, you can't even give this to like little kids to have them drive like and play on the easiest setting they're just, like the AI is just gonna whoop your butt <laughs> and the kids will get upset at you for it's like why 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 did the computer beat me I asked <laughs> it, it it's not it's not the ideal party game I'm, I'm sorry like CTR just can't work at parties because there's so much you need to learn like especially if you play Mario Kart a lot you have to learn like you have to master power sliding which I'm still trying to do especially on the tightest of courses you still have like power sliding is a much different mechanic than drifting is in Mario Kart 8 and the turn like like the turns are tighter like the pace is faster and it's still a little less familiar to like especially if you're playing on Nintendo Switch Nintendo fans but other than that um despite all the deficiencies and despite um it not being like mostly a party game not being a party game if at all you're gonna get a lot of content out of this even if you're playing by yourself like I usually do um there's, like I said, there's a lot of game modes, an adventure mode, local ar all the local arcade modes, the Grand Prix mode that is being offered. Thank you so much that they put that in there for free. No microtransactions at all. No catches. And that's what I love. Um, the Although, I will admit the Wumpa Coins, um, they need to like up the ante with the, the Wumpa Coins for like offline mode. That's my utter complaint about CTR. For especially for those that don't like the Nintendo Switch online service, and that's pretty much other than that, you're gonna spend a lot of time with Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. If you want to like some like a refresher from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or something like an alternative, CTR is a great alternative. You just have to get over the learning curve. You just have to like adjust. You know, you'll have to adjust to the mechanics of Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. I will say this as a final like note: um, if you're getting this for the Switch, like I like I have it right now, um, and you want to play online, just be wary of like the less active player base. Like it's not as like big as the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. So if you're considering getting this for the Switch for like for both docked and handheld play, then just and you want you also want to play online, then I just suggest um, looking at how big the player base is. Um, you'll you'll find a like you'll be able to like try it again to matches like but it might be a little inconsistent because I've had some experience um, with like online matchmaking where it take like min like at least a minute tops to find a match and then like seconds to get into one. So just be wary of that, and then also be wary of again bringing this to parties because this is not an ideal kart racer to bring to parties because of the difficulty and learning curve people will have to get adjust to. And if you do bring it to parties and you have little kids and people that don't know how to play this, well, you're going to have to be the teacher and lecturer. <laughs> but overall, I think Crash Team Racing is a very fun game, and I will leave it at that. And that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, I know this, by the time I edit this, edit this out, it's going to be pretty long. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, leave a like, leave a dislike, whatever you feel like doing. Leave a comment down below. Do you have CTR, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel? Do you play it? Do you play it at all? Do you 
do you like Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled or Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or maybe even Team Sonic Racing? <laughs> Sound off in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, tap the bell so you can be notified of every Dylan Lasagna video and even the community posts that I like to spam on you. <laughs> and follow me on my social medias if you like and just keep watching all those videos and always be delicious. I will see you all in the next one and I'm out.